Hey everybody, I'm Ryan from Minus the Gym, and I'm out here on a morning walk because it's supposed to be pretty hot today, so I'm trying to beat the sun and enjoy the weather before it's too hot. And I want to make a quick video about fruit because online, like on Reddit and on YouTube and stuff, I've noticed a lot of people saying that fruit makes you fat and fruit's not good for you because it's made of sugar. So I wanted to clear the air on that. I mean, there's really no reason to think that fructose is bad for you. Like all foods, if you eat too much of it, it'll make you gain weight. But that doesn't mean it's bad for you. So there's this fancy term in biology, sister taxon. And it means basically your genetically closest related animal or species on the planet. And for humans, our sister taxon, well, we actually have two. Um, so that'd be sister taxa, plural. We have bonobos and chimpanzees. Now, according to Scientific American, bonobos and chimps are 98.8% genetically identical to us, all right? So although 1.2% difference in DNA can make, you know, quite a big difference, you have to keep in mind that they are our sister taxa. So if you were gonna look at any species on the planet as like a guideline for how we should eat, it would be bonobos and chimps. So with bonobos and chimps, when they're studied in the wild, specifically chimpanzees, that's most of the uh, data that I could find, they eat 92% approximately, 92% plant-based food, okay, coming from primarily fruit and leafy vegetation. The other 8% is coming from animal-based foods like insects, eggs from birds' nests, and small animals. So when you look at that information, you realize that the animals that we evolved from ate primarily fruit, like 90% of their diet, roughly, was coming from fruit. So how could it possibly make sense that we aren't meant to eat a lot of fruit? So our digestive systems evolved from a frugivore, okay, an omnivorous frugivore. Now when you combine that with some of the evidence out there, like the studies that have been done on fruit and weight loss, you'll see that fruit does not make you fat, it actually does the opposite. So the studies that I'm talking about, one of them, my favorite actually, is a meta-analysis done by what's called the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition. Okay, and I'll put, I'll put the information, like for, you know, the reference for this down below. The meta-analysis is like an analysis of the results of many different studies. So what this Journal of Clinical Nutrition did is they looked at the results of 22 different studies on fruit consumption it was specifically looking at high fiber diets versus low fiber diets. And what they found in the results was that the more fruit people consumed, then the more weight they lost. So fruit doesn't make you fat, it actually helps you lose weight. And guys, one more thing I wanna emphasize is that when I'm talking about fruit and fructose in this video, I mean whole fruit, okay? I'm referring to like apples, oranges, bananas, grapes. I'm not talking about high fructose corn syrup and any kind of you know refined sugar. That's definitely not good for you because it's just one nutrient taken from a whole food. But when you have a whole food, like fruit in its natural state, that's what our body is meant to consume because it's packaged with so many good nutrients. It has, well, first it has water, which is extremely important for us. Fiber, tons of fiber, which helps us, you know, get things moving in our bowels. But then you got tons of vitamins and minerals, antioxidants, I mean, and they're jam-packed with it. When you consider how low in calories fruit is, they are jam-packed with all these micronutrients. All right, guys, we're coming back up to my house. So let's go inside. I'm just gonna show you a few quick ways that you can incorporate more fruit into your diet. All right, one of my favorite ways to incorporate more fruit is grain bowls. So start off with a grain or a pseudo grain like this quinoa and just add in some diced ripe fruit. Here I got nectarine, I got blueberries, I had some sliced cherries on hand, and then you can add nuts and seeds to it, some fresh herbs, whatever you want. What's beautiful about grain bowls is that grains and nuts and seeds have protein, so this plate has over 20 grams of protein in it, plus a lot of fruit. And don't forget about the original grain bowl, oatmeal. All right, oatmeal you can add fruit and spices to as well. Smoothies are another one of my favorite ways to eat more fruit because you just pile everything into a blender and then you turn it on and let it rip. And within five minutes, you're done. You got yourself a smoothie, which is basically a mega dose of fruit. 
Now, if you freeze the fruit for your smoothies, you can make a smoothie bowl because it's thicker. You can eat it with a spoon and add other ingredients like sliced fruit, nuts, and seeds. And speaking of frozen fruit, once you start freezing your fruit on the regular, it's time to invest in what's called the Yonana's Frozen Dessert Maker. I have an entire video on this with different recipes, but really the possibilities are endless with fruit-based ice cream. So next time you go to the grocery store, spend a little extra time in the produce section, take a look at all the fruit, see what you like, what you don't like, and try to start incorporating more fruit into your diet. It will not hurt you, it will only help you, and it will help you with weight loss. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. That'll tell YouTube to help others find it as well. And you should consider subscribing to Minus the Gym. I'm super passionate about wholesome plant-based nutrition and home fitness. So if that interests you, subscribe and tap that bell icon so you get notified every time I upload.